Ryan, let's take a look at your Caribbean report for tonight. We start in St. Lucia, where organizations of the Eastern Caribbean state members and members of the World Trade Organization are working towards securing flexibilities that they have obtained in the negotiations on agriculture and non-agriculture tariffs. These flexibilities will enable the OECS members' governments to avoid cuts to their border taxes, including import taxes, as a result of the current round of multilateral trade negotiations. Head of the OCS Secretary's Technical Mission in Geneva, Richard James, says this is one of the matters discussed at a recent talk in Dominica among the OECS trade member officials on the current round of the world trade negotiations that we have been negotiating for for over 10 years. The areas discussed in this round of negotiations included market access for agriculture and industrial goods, trade facilitation, fishery subsidiaries, intellectual property rights, and services. The OECS Technical Mission in Geneva reported significant progress in the OECS in most areas with the world trade negotiations, but added that there is still much work to be done. And in St. Kitts and Nevis, Prime Minister Dr. Denzel Douglas said on Tuesday that he has never discussed with anyone that Prime Minister of Education and Information, Senator Nigel Carty, will succeed him as Prime Minister. Succession in St. Kitts and Nevis Labor Party is determined by the members of the party, said Douglas, who dismissed the question from a female caller on his weekly radio program, Ask the Prime Minister. I have never discussed with anybody that Nigel Carty will succeed me as Prime Minister or even as a political leader of the Labour Party. That is false, said Douglas. At the end of the day, although Nigel Carty is one such person, there are several others to choose from, but Nigel Carty definitely is one who can succeed me as the Labour Party representative. In the final analysis, of course, it will be determined by the members of the Labour party who, in their constituency, when the time comes, I am sure will make the right decision. You may recall that Senator Nigel Carty was discussed earlier in the Caribbean Report this week as his attempts to try to legalize drug testing in public schools. And finally tonight in Kingston, Jamaica, reggae fans from all across the globe place roses before a statue of Bob Marley on Wednesday to mark the 30th anniversary of the death of the musician whose charismatic lyrics promoting one love took Jamaica's musical genre to an international audience. Tourists watched as three clerics from the Ethiopian Orthodox Church spread incense and holy water around Bob Marley's museum, the singer's former home in the capital of Kingston. People of the Rastafarian faith gathered around and properly spoke reverently about the icon of reggae music who died of cancer in 1981 at the age of 36. In his Caribbean homeland, Bob Marley's legend was cemented in 1978 when he famously united warring political party leaders Michael Manley and Edward Sega in a solidary handshake during his One Love Peace concert in Kingston, a moment that has become immortalized in Jamaica's consciousness. This Caribbean report is brought to you by MLK Tires, keeping you rolling right. That's your Caribbean report for tonight. And get your pens and papers out. It's time to check the winning lottery numbers for tonight's drawing. In first place prize, the winning lottery number for $175,000 is 11510. Second place prize, the winning lottery number tonight, 2257. Four for sixty-five thousand dollars. Third place prize. The winning lottery number tonight is two, eight, one, one, two for forty thousand dollars. For thirty thousand dollars, the fourth place prize. The winning lottery number tonight is six, one, three, eight. And the fifth and final prize winning lottery drawing number tonight is one, five, three, four, eight for twenty thousand dollars. Well, we hope we had a winner out there. The next drawing by the lottery will be on May 26th, 2011. And when we come back from this break, we'll take a look at some more community activism. Stay with us. Tonight in your sports 411, Coach Basie is the community activist trying to make a difference with the youngsters in our territory. Let's take a look. I'm here with Coach Basie Gonzalez. And um, I hung out with Basie Saturday morning at the basketball uh, court at the uh, Juanita Garden. And I saw the parents coming in, and I know this young man here from coaching and being very active with the kids. And I asked him some questions about 
you know, what kind of support he gets. And it really, really hit close to home. And I said, look, we need to do a story about this. However, he's with the, um, your group is called Positive Guidance. Positive Guidance. And you work with kids from all ages. Yeah, all ages. My youngest is five right now. The oldest is 13. Um, I actually have a couple 14 and 15 year old that comes on Saturday to work out with me. Now, you know, this is a man here who actually take his, his personal vehicle, the truck, take pick the kids up from their home, do everything from his pocket, pay for the gas for his truck, buy the kids refreshments after school, buy them basketball supplies so they can go to the gym and play and help them, you know, buy gear so they can help improve the game out of his pocket. And I said, you know what? Everything starts at home and we worry about, you know, what's going on with our children. And he's inter he's actually um, in intervening with the kids at an appropriate time right before they get at that teenage level. Now, tell me, what inspired you to do that? Um, well, I I've realized through experience that when, you know, it's pretty difficult to change a kid's mind at 15, 16 years old. And, um, you know, I said, you know what, let me target the younger kids, the seven, the five, the six year old, you know, the 12 year old, because um, if I could put them in the right structure early, mm -hmm. then you, a lot of us won't have to deal with the negative, you know, um, behavior from the kids that when they reach 15 and 16 years old. So, you know, it was just for me to just, you know what, let someone else target the older kids. Let me start with the younger kids and hopefully, you know, they could, it could work out, you know, just provide a positive atmosphere. Let them feel like they're wanted somewhere. You know, when you were growing up, when I was growing up, we had support from the from the from the parents. We had support from from um, what's uh, youth, youth commission? commission. Yeah, youth commission was what, where I started mm -hmm. in Shabbat. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, those and that entity is no longer around. And a lot of you know, a lot of things have a lot of negative things have started since that the youth commission has gone. You know, so you know we can't rely on the government for everything or much so i just took take it upon myself to do what i have to do you know i have about 30 kids and um you just have a nice little group there you know a nice home yeah I, I don't normally get on camera but you know when i when i actually um you know as a general manager vice president for the station i i, I told um when i spoke to base i said look you know count me and i'm going to help you you know um, on some of your projects and help you in your endeavor to help support the kids. And then we got Alexis George involved and we're going to be working with Basie and trying to get him some funds so we can um, have an avenue for the kids. But right now we're going to do the uh, the drawing and um, if for, for the drawing, who, um, how much money you raised so far? Um, well, you know, um, the drawing, this was our first drawing ever. So we raised over $2,000. Um, could have raised more, but you know you can ask for two, you know. Well, for, in three months you raised two thousand dollars. It's it's something. It's better than what it was before. Yeah. Okay, and and what's and we have the box here. Let's get the box. We're gonna have somebody pick the winner. We're gonna have our news anchor Jerome Ajian, just in time. So, Jerome, this is what we're doing. All right, tell us a little bit about. Okay, Jerome's gonna pick now. And there we go. Here's our first place winner. It looks like uh, it's either Michael or Michelle Wright is our first place winner oh and that's gosh. for and that's for uh, uh the indulgence spa yeah all right it looks like michael michael i think uh, it's michael you think it's michael right michael wright or michael michelle wright or michelle okay wright. well either way it's spa is unisex right that's right that's right so that's first place to um crystals um to indulgence spa indulgence spa okay so, so that's so coach basically that's the first that's your first winner okay we'll shake for the second prize and second prize is a two night stay at the divi a one night stay at the Divi. A one night stay at the Divi. Boy, I wish my name was getting pulled out of this one. <laughs> and let's okay. go. Peter St. Louis. Peter St. Louis. Yeah, Peter St. Louis. Yeah. And Peter's got a one night stay. One night stay at the Divi. Okay. That's Lucky good. guy. Congratulations to Peter, Peter. And last but not least, this is for brunch at the H2O, right? Get that first name right there, C. Smith. C. Smith. One, a uh, brunch. Is it a brunch for one or a brunch for two? Brunch for four over at H2O, and they get great brunches, by the way. I love the brunch over there at the, at uh, H2O. Well, we know you got to get back upstairs, but thanks, Jerome Gian, who just picked the winners. So we got we recap first place, Michael Wright or Michelle Wright, uh, Indulgence Spa. Uh, second place. Is second place was Peter St. Louis. He's and he's got place. one night stay at the Divi, lucky guy. And uh, C. Smith wins a brunch for four at the uh, H2O.
Nice. Thanks, Jerome. You bet. I would like to thank all of the others, all, um, of course, contributing uh, folks who participated. And we're going to be doing, you're going to be doing more um, yeah, drawings be, and more fundraising with, definitely with gonna you have, know, for the kids. Yeah, we're going to have more fundraising, more drawings, and big sales. I just want to thank everyone that supported Positive Guidance through this raffle. I want to thank all the parents that have been involved in getting this done, you know, and I want to thank you, Glendre, for um, putting it out there. And any volunteers, anyone that knows about basketball, anyone that wants to talk up to the kids and give them positive information, you know, uh, feel free to call me and set up a date. You know, my number is 277-6451. Again, 277-6451. Hey man, thanks a lot and good work, man. Thank you. And like you said, the government can't do it all by itself, but as, as a community, we can help and do our our piece, our end. And we're here at Channel 8, including Jerome and Jim. We're all going to do what we got to do to help our young people. Thanks again, man. Okay, thanks. And congratulations to the winner.